Chapter 10. Varjak dreamed. He dreamed he was back in Mesopotamia. Zigzag trees swayed in the warm night breeze. The sky was bright with stars. The air smelled like cinnamon and tasted of ripe dates. Jalal walked beside him. Can you teach me how to talk to do dogs, Jalal? What kind of trees are these? said the old cat abruptly. Trees? All around us there are trees. Perhaps you have noticed. The zigzag trees, Varjak nodded. So what kind of trees are they, Varjak poor? Varjak bit his tongue. Jalal wasn't talking about dogs and Varjak had no idea about the trees. He didn't want to disappoint his ancestor, but what else could he do? I don't know, he admitted. Jalal stopped walking and placed his paws squarely on the earth. Awareness, he said. The second skill. If you are to survive in the world, you must be aware of everything in it, whether you need to find food, fight an enemy or even talk to a dog. Before you do anything, you must know what you are dealing with. Assume nothing. Be sure of the facts. Open your senses. Spread them wide like a net. Observe the world, what it looks like, what it sounds like, even what it tastes like. The air tastes of dates, suggested Farjak. It does indeed. That is because these trees are date palms. See the zigzag patterns on the trunk? That is how to recognise a date palm tree. Jalal pointed out the other trees on the riverbank. He gave names to the trees and taught Varjak how to recognise them by the patterns on their trunks and the scents of their fruits. Varjak stored the knowledge carefully in his mind as they stood under the palms, practising awareness for a timeless time. Again, Jalal always said, he was a stern teacher. Again, and then at last, enough. I never knew there was so much in the world, said Varjak. That is because until now you have used only a small part of your potential. The rest is locked within you, but you are capable of anything, my son, anything at all. Each sense is like a fine web that goes into the world. Your whiskers can detect the slightest changes in the air, the smallest movements. Your nose can scent fear. Once developed, your awareness can feel even danger and tell you when you are being watched. Jalal's ears suddenly pricked up. He dropped into a low crouch. Listen, can you hear it? Varjak listened to the peaceful Mesopotamian night. He could hear nothing unusual. Pay attention, said Jalal. Near the top of the range, there is a scratching, squeaking, chirping noise. It comes from the edge of the water. Can you hear it now? Varjak closed his eyes and concentrated. There it was, just as Jalal said. I hear it, but what is it? Breakfast, said Jalal. Chapter 11. <clears throat> hey, Varjak heard the gravelly voice as if it was, as if from a great distance. Hey, you, poor Jack, or whatever your name is, wake up. He opened his eyes. Once again, the dream was over. He was back in the soggy timber hut in the middle of the park. He was cold, wet and hungry. Did you say something about breakfast? He groaned. He heaved himself up and scratched his ear. A trail of dirty water trickled out. Breakfast, said another voice. Varjak looked to the door. It was open. A comfortable looking cat with shaggy chocolate brown fur sat there. I haven't heard that word for a long time, she said. Remember breakfast, Holly? The spiky black and white cat called Holly shook her head. Did you find anything? She asked. Not a sausage, but looks like you have. The new cat winked at Varjak. Where'd you dig him up? Mind your own business, said Holly. She turned to Varjak. The storm's over. It's time to go. He peered through the door. It was night again. It looked freezing out there. He had a memory flash. The sky bellowing with thunder. He couldn't stand to be alone so soon. Have a heart, Holly, said the chocolate brown cat. Look at him. He's obviously not dangerous. She smiled at Varjak. My name's Tam. Don't you mind Holly here? She's in a bad mood right now, but her bark's worse than her bite. That's enough, snapped Holly. Varjak looked into her eyes. They were a sharp mustard colour. So are you going to help me find a dog, he asked. A dog, said Tam. Her eyes were wide and round like saucers. Why? I need to talk to one. Talk to a dog, Tam whispered. I know it's difficult. Her shaggy, shaggy coat shuddered. It's worse than that. Do you have any idea what you're saying? Don't listen to him, Tam, said Holly. He doesn't know anything. Yes, I do, said Varjak. Go on, tell Tam what your name is, she smiled. I'm Varjak Poor, he said, with all the dignity he could muster. It's a noble name. I'm a Mesopotamian Blue. 
There was a hush for a moment and then Tam started to giggle. Holly grinned. Mesopotamia what? said Tam. Mesopotamia. It's where my family's from. Sounds weird, said Tam. Where is it? Varjak scratched his head. I don't exactly know, he admitted, but haven't you been there? I've only ever dreamed about it. They both laughed this time. The strange thing was, Varjak didn't mind. It wasn't like being bullied by Julius. These cats were so different from his family. He enjoyed the way they talked, even when they teased him. He grinned with them, and just for a moment, he felt the invisible barrier between them drop. Well then, said Tam, if you're not from there, you're from here. You're one of us. He's not from here, Holly told her. He's a pet. Says he lives on the hill, got lost in the storm. I'm here to save my family, said Varjak. You are? breathed Tam. From who? A gentleman. He's got these scary black cats. Even their eyes are black and they walk all strange. Varjak paused. He knew he was sounding odd. Like this, he said and tried to walk like the black cats, but found he couldn't really do it on his own. Tam and Holly cracked up laughing again. I like him, said Tam. He reminds me of Luca. The warm laughter died away all of a sudden, and the hut became very silent. Varjak looked over at Holly. There was a sad look in her mustard eyes. Luca's a friend of ours, said Tam. He used to be. He looked like me, but he sounded like you. He could always make us laugh. Anyway, he ended up joining a gang. It was when the food started to run out. The gangs were taking everything. We were so hungry. I told him it was a bad idea, said Holly quietly, but he joined one anyway, and then he vanished. Some friend. He left you? asked Varjak. Not left, said Holly. Vanished. It happens all the time in this city. She glanced at the door. Her invisible barrier was definitely up again, but that's just what friends do. They're not worth having. Why not? Varjak thought he'd give anything to, to do anything for a friend. He'd give anything and do anything for a friend. Nothing could be worth more. Because they let you down, they leave you in the end, it's best to be alone. Don't worry, Varjak, said Tam. She doesn't mean it. Holly tries to act all hard, but she's the best friend you could have. And she likes you, really, I can tell. That's enough, shouted Holly. She looked hurt. If you two are such good friends now, why don't you just go off together? She stalked away out of the hut into the park. She was going. Varjak followed her. He had a strange feeling like something important was slipping through his paws. Wait, he said. Don't follow me, she growled and padded off. Tail held up, spiky and solitary, an unapproachable cat. Oh no, said Tam, hurrying after her. I shouldn't have mentioned Luca. I ruined it. Holly, wait for me. She scuttled away into the night and Varjak's paw was alone once again. <laughs>